It's not the wild, wild west anymore. But after near extinction, these huge animals still roam the Great Plains of the United States. Are they buffalo or bison? Find out on this edition of Unspoiled Planet. Is it a bison or a buffalo? A bit confusing, although commonly referred to as a buffalo, bison is its proper scientific name. And like domestic cattle and oxen, it is a member of the Bovidae family. But this huge animal is far from domestic. The name buffalo began when French explorers dubbed this massive mammal as le boeuf, meaning oxen. English settlers called it le boeuf. Eventually, a series of modifications led to the word buffalo. Today, bison and buffalo are synonymous. There are three subspecies of bison, the plains bison, wood bison, and the European wizent. The majestic buffalo is more than a wild animal. It symbolizes the American West, the frontier spirit, especially the native culture. It was once engraved on the back of the U.S. nickel with a Native American on the front. The new redesigned U.S. nickel beginning in 2005 includes the buffalo once again. The bison has a massive head and four quarters covered with long, dark brown woolly hair. It has a short neck and a beard. Its forehead is short and broad. The distinctive hump between the shoulders is a fat storage area. The buffalo's hips and hindquarters are much smaller and have short hair. This forms a distinctive slope from its hump to its short tufted tail. In the 1800s, the market for buffalo meat was booming. Railroad companies and the army contracted with hunters to provide food for the troops and construction crews. Back east, there was high demand for buffalo robes. Buffalo hides were also used as drive belts for industrial machines. The demand kept buffalo hunters like Buffalo Bill Cody very busy. He was one of the best known hunters who claimed to have killed more than 4,000 bison in 18 months. But he was also outspoken about the careless slaughter of these animals. There were so many bison, they were being killed indiscriminately. The railroads, faced with herds blocking their lines, even offered passengers the opportunity to hunt by rail, shooting herds from the train and leaving them for dead. At one point, the U.S. Army was attempting to cut off the food supply to the Indians by eliminating the bison. They even supplied free ammo to hunters. By the time the killing spree was over, their numbers dwindled to near extinction. At the end of the 19th century, there were less than 1,000 buffalo left. In 1894, Congress enacted strong laws to prohibit killing bison on federal preserves. Once upon a time, there were more buffalo than people. Some estimates are as high as 60 million. European explorers were astounded at the vast number of buffalo on the plains, exclaiming, the plains were black and appeared as if in motion. Today, the population is growing they are no longer listed as an endangered species. Some ranchers believe that the demand for buffalo meat is the key to continuing the population growth. With more than 350,000 bison roaming the U.S. again, most experts agree the return of the buffalo is a conservation success story. They are still the largest mammal in America. These wild creatures live for about 35 years and grow to six feet tall at the shoulder, 10 to 12 feet long, and about 2,000 pounds. Most people don't think of buffalo being fast or being able to jump, especially when compared to a horse. It is widely known that horses are fast and capable of leaping over high jumps. However, most people don't know that a bison can outrun and outjump a horse. Buffalo can jump a six-foot fence, run at speeds up to 35 miles per hour in a matter of moments, and turn on a dime. At first glance, they may look docile, 
but make no mistake, without much warning, they become fierce and aggressive, especially if provoked. Both males and females have horns. They are, in a word, unpredictable. The size, strength, and speed of the buffalo are no match for most predators, even a grizzly bear. Their sharp horns and hoofs are deadly weapons, but wolves seem to be the one predator that have some success with bison. The power of the buffalo is legendary. Even other animals such as antelope, deer, and elk will stick close to a buffalo herd as protection from predators. In the U.S., bison are living in practically every state. The majority of buffalo today can be found on private ranches, mostly west of the Rocky Mountains, especially Montana and New Mexico. National parks preserve herds as well. In fact, early in the 20th century, the National Bison Range was established in Montana to preserve these majestic animals. The range covers 18,500 acres in the hill country, mostly grassland. Here, bison, elk, deer, bighorn sheep, and mountain goats are free to wander. The range provides all the elements necessary for students and others to study these animals in their natural habitat. Its history goes back to 1873, when Indians returned from a hunting expedition to this area of Montana with four orphaned calves. By 1896, there was a herd of more than 300 head, the largest herd still in existence at that time. Then, in 1908, the U.S. government established the area to preserve the bison. It is the oldest wildlife refuge in the nation. In 1872, Congress established Yellowstone National Park as the first national park in the nation. It is dedicated to preserving a wild, free-ranging population of bison. The last known herd of truly native wild bison was in Yellowstone in 1902. At that time, there were only 23 left. Eventually, the park introduced a fenced herd, and the number of bison has increased. More than 40 Native American tribes maintain herds of bison, a centerpiece of their culture. And you'll also find bison in some zoos. They are vegetarians, living on grasses. Bison spend most of their time grazing for food, eating about 25 pounds a day with only one stop for water. They are nomadic. The search for food sometimes takes them five to 10 miles a day and distances of a few hundred miles over the course of a year. Bison ranchers often supplement grazing with feed, usually wheat, corn, barley, or oats. During the warm months, bison like to roll or wallow in the dirt for a fresh coat of dust to keep flies and other insects away. Up next on Unspoiled Planet, why are these bison being shot? And discover incentives to preserve and increase the buffalo population. In the winter months, bison grow a warm winter coat. Here you can see its remains as it sheds piece by piece in the spring. Finding food is more difficult in the winter, especially in the plain states like Montana, where the snow gets deep. The buffalo can use its huge head like a snowplow to find food. However, sometimes bison succumb to the raw and frigid cold of the northern plains. In Yellowstone, some bison prefer the warmer areas around the geysers. But sometimes, the search for food and warmth causes them to stray from the park. Rangers attempt to keep the bison within park boundaries to avoid intermingling with domestic livestock and possibly spreading disease. When those attempts fail, the state orders the wandering buffalo to be killed. In those cases, the buffalo are slaughtered. The carcasses are either sold at public auction or donated to Native Americans. During the severe winter of 1996 and 97, Yellowstone had to slaughter 1,100 bison. 
The debate is raging over this policy while the park and other agencies are investigating the impact and alternatives to the slaughters. When mating season comes around in mid-July to mid-August, bulls are so preoccupied with fighting and courting, they often lose hundreds of pounds. Only the strongest bulls have mating rights. During most of the year, bulls and cows are separated. The bulls stick together and seem to constantly push each other around, jockeying for position as lead bull. A buffalo cow stands at five feet and weighs 1,200 pounds. Cows mature at age two and can produce as many as 25 calves in a lifetime. They usually produce one 25 to 35 pound reddish colored calf annually. It takes about 270 days for a calf to fully develop to birth in the spring. The newborns are usually up and walking within a few hours. They become attached to their mother and will feed on milk for the first six to nine months. By that time, they weigh about 350 pounds and are ready to wean. Preserving buffalo as an American icon is a worthy endeavor, but ironically, another factor that is motivating ranchers to raise buffalo is the demand for buffalo meat. Now, the rest of the world knows what the Native Americans knew for many years. Buffalo is good food. Now it is a profitable business for ranchers, a $650 million industry. Buffalo are efficient eaters and hardy animals, less susceptible to disease and other illness. Therefore, feed and veterinary costs are lower than producing domestic cattle. Generally, buffalo meat is all natural, free of antibiotics and other drugs, hormones and preservatives. It is becoming a popular meal. The meat is much leaner than beef and is sought after as the alternative red meat because of its great taste and its healthy attributes such as high iron content, low calories, and low cholesterol. It is the only red meat that does not cause any allergic reactions. The National Bison Association estimates 15,000 buffalo are slaughtered annually, producing more than 7 million pounds of meat. Demand is growing but not expected to outpace the demand for beef. Buffalo ranches have also become a great tourist attraction, providing tours catering to families seeking a close encounter with bison and the Old West. Some of the ranchers offer private hunts. The cost of a hunt can range from $2,500 to $4,500, allowing the hunter to keep the animal. Not only are bison a source of food, but years ago, the Native Americans depended on them as a resource for their very existence, using every part of the animal for food, clothing, shelter, and more. Some experts estimate they know of 80 to 90 different uses for buffalo. Their coarse guard hair and soft undercoat for clothing, the hide for the teepee, bones for tools, and meat for food. The animal, particularly the skull, also had particular cultural and spiritual significance and was used in many ceremonies, such as the sun dance. Now, the skulls are primarily used as a decorative art form. The vast beauty of the American West, the prairie, the Rocky Mountains, the desert, and all that live in the earth, sky, and water maintain special spiritual significance to Native American tribes from that region. The Indians lived here long before European settlers expanded across the continent, conquering the land, the people, and much of the wildlife, marking the end of an era. Today, many tribes keep their old traditions alive. The buffalo was the centerpiece for many Indian tribes in the Great Plains. The Tatonkta, the Sioux, the Crow, the Lakota, the Shoshone are just a few of the nations that developed a special relationship with the buffalo. There are many buffalo ceremonies, buffalo dances, and buffalo feasts. Some tribes call bison the buffalo people. To them, the buffalo radiates power and is sacred. According to Shoshone legend, the buffalo came to man in a vision revealing instructions for the sun dance ceremony. 
During the ceremony, buffalo skulls were used as an altar, and other parts of the ritual included dragging them on a dancer's back until the horns dug into his flesh. Buffalo themes are central to the dance. There is even a ritual of burning buffalo chips. The belief is that burning the chips releases a spirit that appeases the buffalo god. Before a big hunt, Indians would perform the buffalo dance in hopes of bringing the buffalo close to camp. The Indians hunted with bow and arrow, but one of the most effective methods was to drive the herd over a cliff, a so-called buffalo jump, where they could be harvested below. In his autobiography, Buffalo Bill tells the tale of a stampede. He wrote, The next day we pulled out of camp, and the train was strung out to a considerable length along the road which ran near the foot of the sand hills, two miles from the river. Between the road and the river, we saw a large herd of buffaloes grazing quietly, they having been down to the stream for a drink. Just at this time, we observed a party of returning Californians coming from the west. They too noticed the buffalo herd, and in another moment, they were dashing down upon them, urging their steeds to the greatest speed. The buffalo herd stampeded at once and broke down the hills. So hotly were they pursued by the hunters that about 500 of them rushed through our train pell-mell, frightening both men and oxen. Life on the Great Plains when the buffalo and the Indians were free was a matter of survival, especially in the winter. In the journals of Lewis and Clark, Captain Clark noted temperatures of 45 below zero and snow too deep for the horses to travel. Here, he described joining the Mandan Indians on a buffalo hunt in 1804. The big white grand chief of the first village came and informed us that a large drove of buffalo was near and his people were waiting for us to join them in a chase. Captain Lewis took 15 men and went out and joined the Indians who were, at the time he got up, killing the buffalo on horseback with arrows, which they did with great dexterity. His party killed 10 buffalo, five of which we got to the fort by the assistance of a horse, in addition to what the men packed on their backs. Clark also documented large numbers of antelope in the region. When Unspoiled Planet continues, we'll take a look at the antelope and the other animals roaming the Great Plains. On the Great Plains, buffalo are joined by many other interesting animals. One that is still abundant on the prairie is the antelope. Pronghorn antelope are found only in America. They are the fastest mammal in North America, capable of running at 60 miles per hour. At high speed, they can cover 14 to 24 feet in a single stride. Both sexes have horns, and they are the only animals in the world who shed their horns annually. The Great Plains are also known for being home to elk. Like buffalo, the elk population decreased significantly due to overhunting. But the population has recovered, and today they are primarily in the Rocky Mountains and the Pacific Northwest. Bison also share the plains with bighorn sheep. Bighorn live in the meadows near grassy mountain slopes and foothill country near rugged rocky cliffs. Here they graze on grasses and escape into the hills for protection. Sometimes, bighorn form herds of more than 100 individuals, but small groups of 8 to 10 are more common. Easily recognized by his massive brown horns, the male sheep is called a ram. By age seven, the ram can have a set of horns with a full curl and a spread of up to 33 inches. Females are called ewes. They are smaller than the rams and have shorter, smaller horns with only a half curl. Rattlesnakes can also be found in the grassland prairie. It is believed that these snakes developed its rattle on the prairie to avoid being stepped on by bison, antelope, and other large animals. There are more than 30 different types of rattlers, all belonging to the viper family. These cold-blooded reptiles can live to be 25 years old and are typically found in the deserts and prairies from Canada to Mexico. Rattlesnakes tend to be loners that hibernate for up to six months through the winter, and they typically hunt at night. They have excellent eyesight 
and the pits between their eyes and nostrils enable them to sense heat images. Surprisingly, the snake uses its quick forked tongue to smell, and with its two hollow fangs, rattlers are feared for their poisonous bite. However, a bite from a rattler is rarely fatal, only about 1% of the time. But rattlesnakes can bite without injecting venom. They usually save their venom for their prey. The venom contains enzymes that begin the digestion process. The snakes eat their prey whole, head first, by unlocking their jawbones. While eating, rattlesnakes are defenseless. But the only predators the rattlesnake has to worry about are the eagles and people. The large animals like buffalo aren't hunting the snakes, but sometimes rattlers get stomped accidentally. Survival on the prairie can be tough, even for a rattlesnake. The vast Great Plains remain some of the most beautiful open country in the U.S. The region was the battleground in the westward expansion, a major transition in history, a transition for the Indians, the bison, and the nation. The buffalo remain one of the most fascinating creatures for its grand appearance and its cultural significance. Once near extinction, the majestic bison has a permanent place in history and as an American icon on this unspoiled planet. <laughs>